uh, Kyu Hyun Cha and he's from Sejong University, South Korea and his talk is, title of his talk is Observational Evidence for Mon Type Gravity from Gaia Observations of Wide Binary Stars. Hello, Kyu Hyun. Hi. Nice to see you. White binaries uh, has been probably the, one of the hottest topics in astronomy and astrophysics for the past six months or so. So uh, I think this will be an uh, exciting time to discuss uh, the current issues. Okay, so uh, we have when we have observed apparent binaries. Uh, it can be pure binary uh, without any additional component, or it can be a hierarchical system. And uh, you have to deal with the 3D motion to the observed motion. So what we observe is uh, the, the apparent motion on the plane of the sky, although the actual motion is in the 3D space. So what? Uh, so we have this uh, relative velocity in 3D space and also relative velocity on the sky. And what we observe is uh, sky projected separation and sky projected velocity uh, that come from proper motions. And here, because uh, apparent binaries can be either pure binary or hierarchical system, uh, and uh, in general, we do not know uh, the, the, the ratio. So we have to uh, assume our parameter, uh, FM, I'll call it FMRT, and then uh, this parameter has to be calibrated or uh, determined from the modeling. Okay. So uh, in the literature, including my recent papers, uh, one can basically consider three methods. Okay, so uh, with uh, relative velocity and uh, relative separation and total mass in 3D space, if they can be inferred, of course, they cannot be uh, observed directly. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but if they can be inferred, then gravity can be tested by this uh, uh, V square of R. I'll call it kinematic acceleration. And uh, uh, at Newtonian acceleration, we of course know Newtonian gravity. So if the motion is circular, then these two will be the same. Uh, that's uh, here. When eccentricity is zero, then they are essentially the same. So if gravity is Newtonian, then we will always have a, a ratio of one. Uh, but uh, what we observe are projected quantities. And uh, uh, for one system, uh, we don't measure these uh, quantities directly. So uh if uh, we have some knowledge then we can distribute observed binaries on the g and gn plane and uh, and then we can compare the observed distribution in the plane with the distribution predicted by newtonian gravity and if the agreement is good then the game is over so we don't need to do any further analysis because it already agrees with uh, Newtonian gravity. So uh, that's the uh, key thing to do. I'll, I'll call this method acceleration plane method. And uh, uh, it was actually inspired by the radial acceleration relation test of in galactic rotation data. Uh, but actually, uh, one can also consider the ratio rather than the plane itself, one can consider, consider the ratio versus Newtonian acceleration. Actually, this is reminiscent of a mass discrepancy acceleration relation. It was uh, considered uh, before radial acceleration relation. Then actually, this uh, acceleration relation becomes velocity ratio, or uh, measured 3D velocity and uh, Newtonian circular velocity. 
And also this uh, uh, Newtonian gravity, uh, if it is uh, uh, normalized by A naught, then uh, it becomes R over Rm. Here Rm is the bond radius. So uh, one can consider uh, V over Vc versus R over Rm. But uh, these V and R are not measured. So uh, in these uh, cases, one has to deal with the, some uh, Monte Carlo deprojection from observed quantities to 3D quantities. So in this Monte Carlo, uh, one has to take into account all possibilities, eccentricity and the orbital phase, inclination. Uh, okay. Now, uh, without a deprojection, uh, if one doesn't want to the, the projection, then one can uh, use the projected velocity uh, divided by circular velocity at the projected radius, not at the physical radius. So this this is called V tilde. Uh, it is uh, used by many people in the literature. So this will be the proxy for V over VCR. And then S over Rm can be a proxy for R over Rm. So one can consider V tilde versus S over Rm relation. Uh, but actually, some people uh, like Indra Neil and uh, uh, Pitodis and Sutherland, they consider actually V tilde versus S without normalizing S with Rm. Uh, so I'll call this uh, a normalized velocity analysis, and uh, this is in preparation. Uh, okay, and then the last method will be uh, the velocity profile. Uh, so one just uh, consider distribution of observed uh, velocity, the projected velocity with respect to projected separation. This will be the, the simplest uh, analysis. And then uh, I, I call it stacked velocity profile analysis. It can work for, for systems uh, of pure binaries of similar masses. Uh, so uh, if this is the orbital motion, then uh, when we observe a certain inclination, then uh, we have this relation the relation between projected velocity and the real 3D relative velocity and uh, uh, the projected separation versus uh, 3D uh, separation. Okay, so uh, from observed football motions, we can calculate sky projected, uh, 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 we can calculate sky, sky projected velocity. So if, uh, 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 an apparent binary is determined to be gravitationally found, uh, I mean a true binary, then actually they can be assumed to be at the same distance because the distance is much, much larger than the separation. Although they are wide, wide binary, it is uh, uh, here we are talking about less than 0.1 parsec. Uh, so uh, so it is, uh, so at 100 parsec, 0.1 parsec is uh, uh, one to 1,000. So uh, it is a very small value. So we can assume they are at the same distance. So so basically this uh, uh, projected, uh, uh, the, the, the proper motion, scalar proper motion becomes basically projected velocity. And likewise, the, the, the Newton predicted projected velocity also can be related to the 3D velocity. And then using the deprojection, we can have this uh, uh, relation. So here, uh, S and M are measured quantities, but all the other parameters here appearing are unknown. So they have to be drawn uh, using Monte Carlo method. Uh, okay, so uh, one key parameter is uh, eccentricities. So uh, for binaries, I'm using uh, eccentricities 
I have been constrained by Huang et al. So for each binary, I have a range of eccentricity. Uh, I have a range of eccentricity. So, so I can uh, uh, use that range rather than uh, using a blind range. Okay, so one can also consider some a statistical distribution uh, rather than individual ranges. Okay, now a uh, binary sample that comes from Gaia data release three. So uh, this would be just the initial candidate, initial candidate pair within one kiloparsec, that's like 100 million. Now, uh, here, uh, what to do? Oh, okay, that's where people can have different opinions. And uh, these people, everybody right there, they remove clusters. So initially, it is like this. So you can see uh, a lot of uh, things uh, are clustered on the galactic plane, but they remove clusters and background pairs and resolve the triples. Uh, okay, so that's the main thing then. You are left with the 1.8 million binary candidate. So here now one has to deal with the chance alignment fly flyby cases. So uh, what can you do here? Okay. So uh, these people they uh, uh, use some um, develop an empirical method to remove flybys. Okay. So they develop a parameter. And then actually their paper, uh, I, I think uh, probably about half of their paper is about this uh, chance alignment probability. So, uh, but uh, one can also uh, do uh, other methods. So basically one can require the binary candidate pair at the same distances, although they have the same radial velocities, but not all of them have radial velocities. So uh, this this method, the second method, can be applied to only a, a, a subsample. Oh, okay. Now uh, here I'm showing results, uh, the most updated result uh, uh, for uh, uh, using the acceleration plane method. So uh, the, the upper panels show uh, the sample, the sample removing chance alignment using this R parameter. And the second panel shows uh, results for a sample removing chance alignment by distances and radial velocities. And, so, and this uh, FMRT is uh, uh, determined by requiring uh, this uh, high acceleration being matches Newtonian. Okay, so here I'm showing the uncertainties, the upper and the lower uncertainty. Here are the same. So if samples are selected in different way, then you see it is FMRT values are different. Uh, that's uh, natural because if your sample sample selection is different, then you expect uh, different uh, uh, fraction of hierarchical systems. And what it shows is uh, striking. I mean, it's incredible. You know, when I saw this result about uh, maybe eight months ago, uh, or seven or eight months ago, I was like, I was dreaming. You can see this alone, it is well above five sigma. You see, how can this happen? I, I have never seen this kind of thing in my career, uh, 20 plus career. So this figure changed actually my opinion completely. You know, when I got some results uh, for uh, rotation curves, well, I got impressed, uh, but they didn't they they didn't change my opinion completely. I was kind kind of half minded. Wow. Modified gravity moon is very impressive, but I cannot, you know, change my mind completely. But when I saw this figure, that changed my mind completely. So I now regard myself completely moon or modified gravity supporter, because you know this is not a joke. Uh, you see, and here 
with the different sampling, uh, okay, this this figure this figure is published, okay, and now this one are uh, in preparation. Also, I'm considering normalized velocity profile method, uh, okay, and this is in preparation. Uh, I probably submit this next week or so, so that will appear on archive in a week or so. So here I'm showing the uh, V tilde as a function of a normalized radius rather than radius itself. Okay, then you can see there is a, a this this a median uh, done elevation, just a natural elevation in in this spinning, and now uh, Indran uh, actually suggested this uh, kinematic cut. Okay, actually he criticized my work based on this kinematic cut. So I applied this kinematic cut. So red are uh, uh, not satisfying kinematic cut and blue are uh, satisfying kinematic cut. Then uh, you can see a blue data point that satisfying kinematic cut that becomes flat. Uh, so uh, what Indra is uh, so agreeing with what Indra says. But now you can see here, mass. The initially mass was flat. So in my sample, the mass didn't change uh, for the small separation and large separation, but mass increases. So uh, this cut actually creates a, a biased sample. So, uh, okay, so that's very interesting, okay. And now here I'm also considering a limited range, uh, two to thirty kilo AU, because th this is what Indrani considered. So the sample is just the fifty six uh, hundred. So it's a close, uh, not the same as uh, Indrani sample. That's about eight thousand. So it's a little smaller than, but uh, in the order of magnitude. So in this case. The range is uh, quite small compared to this. Now, uh, the result. So in this beginning, I calculated Newtonian prediction that those are flat, uh, those are blue. So without kinematic cut, the data is rising as what Indra showed, and the Newtonian prediction is flat. So there is a clear Monde signal. Now Indra suggests uh, we must apply this kinematic cut, then the data becomes flat, red. But because mass, uh, th this sample is biased, mass decreases. That's why Newtonian prediction also changes. So uh, you see there is uh, some change, but uh, the conclusion is not changed. You know, Mund is still preferred. Now, what Indra does is they consider only this uh, narrow range that's shown here. So if you consider only this narrow range, then actually the shapes, the shapes of two curves are similar. So you have you, you lose most of the power. In this case, you can see the change in the shape, but here, uh, if, if you consider narrow range, you cannot see the change. And and now I fixed the the F, the value in the range used point six five. Then I get Newton free for the result. Wow! So I reproduced in the range result with my sample, although the sample is slight difference. So and now this uh, uh, this new sample also won the free for. And now this is for pure binary, and uh, this work was undertaken before Indra's work was released. So uh, it has nothing to do with the, res uh, the response to Indra's paper. It was just uh, tried uh, just uh, uh, earlier. And then uh, you can see for this pure binary sample, in this case, actually there are no fitting. You know, F multi is just assumed to be zero. So there is no fitting. And then you can see these higher acceleration data naturally satisfy Newton, but low acceleration data clearly deviate. And then interestingly, it agrees with just a, a generic aqua prediction. And also this one shows uh, just a, 
a stacked velocity profile. And these two are completely yeah, agreeing with each other. And now here I'm actually mentioning some the, the key uh, problems with the uh, endurance uh, methodology. The, the first one is they use this narrow range where there is only weak discriminating power. Okay. And also they did this uh, binning and then they calculated occupancies. Uh, and then uh, one thing they need to do is uh, they need to consider probably S over R, uh, R sky over RM rather than R sky. And that's more sensible. And also, this uh, cell sizes must be larger than the uncertainties of uh, free tilde. Okay, and then these are the, the uh, references. So uh, people are wondering, and uh, some YouTubers are actually uh, giving false reports, but I suggest you to do analysis yourself. It is certain. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah. questions? I was clapping, so I just wanted to say thanks very much for this wonderful presentation. Yeah. I think it's very convincing. Um, yes. So, we have a lot of questions. Yeah, Frederick? Yes, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, of course, my question is uh, implying my, my work, which is a surrounding model, which is a modified graffiti model. Uh, uh, my, my model uh, requires, uh, my, my model predicts, sorry, uh, something different from Newton's law, slightly different, but it depends of the location of the white binary. If the white binary is far, uh, uh, sorry, is the white, is the, is the white binary is located in the direction of the, of the galactic center, then it's the, uh, the result, which is, opposite uh, to the case in which the white binary is uh, in the direction of the outer space. So uh, uh, my question would be, uh, is there any way in your work to have uh, isotropic, uh, an isotropic, an isotropic uh, result? Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, two, two, two parts of white binary which are uh, in the di di direction of outer space, and from one part, and from what's the second part, uh, the white binary, which are in the direction of the galactic center. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm clear enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, if we go to larger distances, uh, I mean, to do that kind of a test, uh, we need to go to larger distances. We need to consider binaries at larger dist large distances. I mean, it, this sample is uh, uh, within 200 parsec. So they are in the, within the thin disk. Yeah, all, all they are thin disk. So actually we don't see much uh, difference. Basically, uh, you can just consider a local, uh, local neighborhood, local solar neighborhood. Uh, so if you want to uh, test that kind of some uh, space uh, anisotropy, then uh, we need to go actually outside the disk, uh, at least more than probably one, one kiloparsec, and also one kiloparsec to the direction of the uh, galactic center. Then actually a data, you know, become uh, you know, less accurate, less precise. You know, if you go larger distance, then data become less precise. So, uh, I mean, in, in principle, we can do statistical analysis, you know, whatever the precision you have, you can do some statistical analysis, but the, the, the precision become, uh, uh, when the precision gets lower, then, you know, statistical analysis becomes messy. So, yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. All right. Morris want to ask something? Yes, mention something in chat. Uh, yes, and the, uh, the question is, of course, you want to connect whatever you may be finding in white binaries with what is happening in spiral galaxies, because that's the most studied. Um, 
in the uh, spiral galaxies based on spark, uh, I find that the transition between Newtonian and anomalous gravity that ultimately asymptotes to Milgram's law is amazingly accurately right at uh, the, the city scale of acceleration defined by the product of the velocity of light and the Hubble parameter. So I was wondering if you are able to identify the same critical ADS for the transition in this uh, in this study. Well, I you know uh, here I just quantified the deviation from Newton. Okay, here actually there is no calculation of. Uh, modified gravity uh, whatsoever. As I said earlier, if data agreed Newton, then that would have been the end of the analysis. So these are just purely- No, but the point is, this: the, what I'm saying is entirely phenomenological. Yeah, yeah, so, it's not dependent yeah, anymore. So, yeah, so you can use, the, these are purely data. So you can use this data to test whatever you want. Yeah, but why don't you do a test by dividing the horizontal axis by yeah. yes, then it's much easier to read off. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that, but uh, I need to first uh, sort out this uh, analysis uh, more. And then after that, I can, you know, uh, look out uh, to, I mean, I can broaden the analysis to other more specific uh, models like yours. Yeah, so uh, there is well, Again, this is yeah. not a model statement. This is a phenomenological observation. I may have a model for it, but that's a separate discussion. Okay. Um, well, I, I just wanted to mention that in my most uh, most recent study, which is uh, on, a, which I just printed here in, in the chat, it's in the, uh, about to be published in Monthly Notices, um, I include a full uh, analysis of the VTL, the distributions, the actual distributions, and um, the model that I that I tested there was explicitly one which is Newtonian at all scales, but uh, the um, the effective value of G is allowed to vary. So it's basically a, a sort of a maximum likelihood uh, recovery of what the value of G might be at the different regimes. And um, just like uh, like uh, what Key was showing, uh, I, I find uh, completely consistency in, in the sense that um, in the high acceleration regime, uh, which is uh, absent from uh, Indra Neil's uh, papers, in, in the uh, small separations, we find uh, that the uh, effective value of the gravitational constant is exactly the Newtonian value. So the the, the scale of the scale the scaling of G there is is one. And uh, in the low acceleration regime, uh, the scaling I find is exactly, uh, well, I mean, with a high precision, 1.5. So a 50% increase in, in, in the effective value of G. Um, so, I mean, to answer, uh, to try and answer Maurice's question, uh, th that's kind of the, uh, the gravity models that have been tested. And, and that's what we see here in, in, Q's, uh, in, in Q's latest plot to the right. No? We see a, a sort of little... Uh, we, we see the uh, the same sort of Newtonian, or uh, so let's say Keplerian uh, curve in the in both uh, in both regimes. Once you are in the uh, what is calling the boosted regime, there's a transition where, where things sort of change from one to the other. But both in the Newtonian and the boosted regimes, you find uh, Keplerian uh, r to the minus one half falls, but yeah. with a little uh, with a little extra scaling. Um, I think what's now going to be extremely interesting is to look at exactly what's going on in, in that transition function. Obviously, uh, the details of that transition are harder to uh, to quantify because you have fewer stars. Um, and uh, particularly if you want to be very precise and, uh, and, and use extremely high quality cuts where uh, all sorts of kinematic contaminants have been weeded out, and then you're actually looking at gravity rather than a refraction of hidden binary, hidden tertiaries, and uh, flybys, and so on. So, uh, so yes, I, I, to summarize, I just would like to point out the uh, uh, complete uh, concordance between my results and um, and and Q's through the use of highly independent sample selection and statistical analysis. 
And in my view, the uh, the, the current sort of uh, open questions in this in this in this uh, line of research, uh, in terms of what exactly is going on with the transition. Um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, if I can comment on that, this is exactly what uh, I've been advertising in 2018 by simply comparing uh, Spark data with Merck S2 data. And then what is really striking, if you plot it in a normalized plot, so you plot uh, horizontally the expected Newtonian acceleration divided by the De Sitter scale, and vertically you plot the expected Newtonian based on the observed radial acceleration, then you actually you 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 see a striking uh, result in that there is a six sigma deviation between the two, and you find a sharp C zero transition, which of course cannot be explained by dark matter. And on top of that, that the location of that transition is exactly at the the city scale of acceleration, which of course is an invitation to also take this to higher redshifts. Um, but I find this uh, basically. Uh, a, a really strong indicator that this should be taken seriously, because if this is real, something about gravity, then it should be universal. So that's why uh, you would definitely expect this to see this fingerprint also in the white binaries, if indeed, what of course many of us hope, the, the anomaly you see in white binaries is the same uh, anomaly as you see in, uh, in Spark and uh, Spiral Galaxies. And it's the universality, I think, that ultimately will give meaning to this. Exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's why the original idea here was uh, to get away from rotation curves, because there you can always argue that you're looking at uh, feedback and complicated galaxy formation issues, the presence of dark matter and so on. So the idea was to take uh, a low acceleration system, which might, uh, which could be as far removed in every sense from the galactic phenomenology and see if uh, that universality was preserved or not. And over the past year or the past few months, as, as Q was saying, uh, we have indeed confirmed this universality in, in the sort of mon phenomenology appearing at uh, uh, low accelerations. Yeah, so thank you. Yes, uh, but the canonical Mont uh, picture doesn't uh, elucidate the nature of the, uh, the sharp C0 transition uh, in the transition from Newtonian to anomalous gravity. So that, that's an added uh, piece of phenomenology that I think is crucial. Thank you. Uh, simply Thank because, you. Let, if I can add one more comment, because that can actually identify that you have a finite sensitivity to the background uh, cosmology. And that, of course, is a very open question. It's left open in the Milgram's approach where you have an A0 and you don't know where it comes from. Uh, but if the transition is exactly at the background the city scale, then of course you have evidence that it's actually tracing uh, background cosmology.